What does nothing feel like? As co-hosts, you speak openly, but that opens you up to criticism in return. How do you deal with that? This is the People's Countryside Environmental Debate Podcast with me, Stuart the Wild Man Mabber, and... Me, William Mankler. Thank you so much for being with us. For everybody who listens to this podcast, we thank you very much. We want to open the door to new conversations and we don't necessarily talk about the countryside because you, the listeners, send in questions for us to talk about. And uh, we always try and draw it back to the environment if we can. Today's topics are going to be set by Paco in Wimbledon, England, and Fanaka in Kenya, Kenya, however you want to say it. And uh, we try and have uh, conversations or debates. It depends how it how it happens, but it's generally mm-hmm. conversational style we have. And we try and keep the big issues in your com- consciousness. And we try and um, come up with actions to address what we discuss. We're just like you. We're just or- two ordinary guys. We don't see, we might be two ordinary women as well, you don't know. We're two ordinary people, let's include everybody. We don't see the questions before we press record, and so we come at it in a very unprepared way, which is like many listeners are. We just throw the question at you, and you don't have time to prepare, and you sort of have to analyse the well, what you think of it, just like we do, so we try and be relatable. The first question is from Paco in Wimbledon, uh, William, do you want to read that? Do you want to take a deep breath and go for this? It's a long question. <laughs> it really isn't, is it? Um, you're absolutely right, Stuart. We don't look at these questions before. We, we might actually accidentally glance at them. Um, you see them a lot more than I do because you're putting them on the, on our sheet. But mm. you you don't try. You might take a little bit of the information. I might notice some key words, but I don't don't read the questions. So, so when you hear this question. You're actually hearing it as fresh as almost as yeah. fresh as we are. So yeah. yeah, the first question is from Paco in Wimbledon. Now Paco has sent in various amount of different questions, um, and they've changed over the years when when Paco's been sending them in. So thank you very much for your question, Paco. And his question is, and it's a really long question, is what does nothing feel like? Well, I read that just before you started reading it, and three things pop into mind for me but do you want to go first I was, that's quite interesting from the idea of nothing and you've got three things already mm. yeah. <laughs> nothing nothing I, I, as a human it's impossible to feel nothing uh, experience world you'd have to be dead to, experience, to feel nothing mm. so what are the three things you've thought about the first thing that pops into my mind is depending on what again Paco sent this in, in written form if he was to sat in front of us we could try and get understand the nuances of what he was on about. We can, first, we can extract a little bit more. We can talk about yeah. it a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. But the first thing that pops into my mind is maybe what he may be talking about is when you you're confronted with something and you like emotional numbness. Mm. So you don't have any reaction to it at all, and that that could be considered nothing. You don't have a something happens and you just don't react. No, that that can feel freeing because you're not bound down by baggage mm. that that might make you react. It, it mm. might be disconcerting because you think, well, why aren't I feeling something? So it, it can feel like that. But you're still describing something, yeah. aren't you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But it's just a, an, an emotional non-reaction. You it, know, I mean. I would say for me that the time that I feel nothing are, is when I'm sleeping. Mm, yeah, but there's a certain consciousness. I don't. I, I still think. But well, I'm not aware of a certain time of you know when mm, I fall asleep. Mm, dreaming is part of that sleep sleep cycle. Mm, but there's going to be a part of the sleep cycle which I'm completely unaware, mm, consciously at least, of anything happening. What's the best thing about sleep? Falling asleep, being asleep, or waking up from sleep? Dreaming. Mm. for me but uh, not my dreams at the moment well my dreams are disturbing at the moment yes i i i don't have too many disturbing dreams but um they are just they just form for me they form part of just Mm. part of my own psyche yeah what is the best part of falling asleep because i do think that best part of sleep best part best part of sleeping is waking up and feeling like you've actually slept (laughs) Mm. But the but it, there is a time when you're sleeping. There is a moment, and that, and I don't know whether you get into REM sleep actually, Stuart. Because I know we've talked about this before. You don't you don't sleep too well, do you? 
But it's, well, I must be at the moment because I'm having really awful dreams. But um, yeah, that's but medically induced. As far as I know, it, dreaming happens when you're not in REM in deep yeah. sleep. It mm. happens when you're in REM sleep, which is when you're mm. flitting in and out of it. That's why dreams are so feel so short because mm. it actually is only really at a certain part of your sleep cycle. But that's my understanding. I'm not I'm not a sleep scientist, but that's mm. what I've read about. The medication I'm on at the moment is giving me really really bad. <coughs> bad dreams that go on all night so I can wake up and I just go back and continue the dream yeah it's just horrendous that's a that's just horrible it yeah it's on all night yeah because it's almost like you your brain is still it's held the memory of the of that yeah. dream and it keeps keeps it on keeps yeah, it's on. just a weird thing mm. um the the other the second thing that comes to mind with well how does nothing feel is uh, people who meditate that, that, and if you do meditation properly, you're not trying to think about nothing. You're just trying to slow your thoughts down and just observe your thoughts and just let them go like buses. You say, where's the bus? Well, there it goes. But, so, you know, some meditators might, might, might be aiming for nothing. So, again, th- that can feel frustrating because you are, you're not thinking about nothing. But to think about nothing, you must be thinking about something. Mm. If nothing exists, then there must be something as you know, the alternative for nothing to exist. Um, I don't know. And then the third thing was, um, if there really is nothing, every like the, the the if you some people argue that the universe will actually just digest itself, and it will just go to back to another there will be everything will be all the chemicals and elements will be used up and there'll be nothing left if there is truly nothing then nothing feels doesn't feel like anything Mm -hmm. because if there's an alternative to nothing then nothing then then it's not nothing but if there's truly nothing it doesn't feel like anything because we're not sentient so you can't don't have the process to feel I don't know. They're the three things that pop into my head about nothing. I think it's a philosophical question that will never be answered in in human existence. Because when we're when we're alive, there is really no such thing as nothing. No. When we're conscious and sentient, there is no such thing as nothing. You can't, can't ever be nothing because you're sentient to feel it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. There's a great quote in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy about the idea of life I can't remember it verbatim but it's some I'm, I'm trying to search it on my phone but I can't find it is that the whole idea of the the the, the universe is infinite mm. and the amount of life is finite finite mm. so then if you divide anything by infinity you basically get to zero you get as close to zero as you possibly can do mm. so actually if you're in this book and in or just in life, if you're uh, if you're going around the universe and you you come across life, it's actually just a figment of your imagination. It's not real. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere along those lines. So I like that idea. Uh, it's, mm. it's an absurd idea, but I like that idea. Mm. But it's like uh, it does th- lead me to think about there is there's always something. Mm. Uh, what's it? Let's go back to that question again and now look at it one more time. What does nothing feel like? I, I don't. I think I think you 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 got as close to it, Stuart, as we possibly can do with mm. the um a feeling of numbness mm. in a situation. You know, mm. when you're conf- when you're confronted with so much information from different areas, different parts of your life, challenges. You can feel like you're stuck. You, know, mm. you feel like you're numb, but you're still feeling something. Yeah, that's not feeling nothing. Yeah, I think I think the idea is feeling nothing is actually almost you're not feeling any sort of strong emotions. You're not feeling sad. You're not feeling elated. You're not feeling anger. You're not feeling calm. You're kind of just in the middle. Mm. I would, uh, another way of looking at it is if you think back to the time before you were born. You yeah. have no concept of what it was. Yes, that's what nothing feels like. Yeah, but it also depends on what you feel, what mm. what you believe in. You know, if you believe in believe in um, uh, the afterlife, or you believe mm. in um, um, what's it called when you reincarnation, my, reincarnation. Thank you, reincarnation. Then you probably feel that that 
the past, mm. don't you? You probably feel mm. pre-birth. You feel that, that, that type of thing. It's mm. a matter of perspective. Not, I don't believe in that myself, but, mm. you know, we know people, I know somebody that does believe that and feels that way. So, uh, what do you think, uh, listening in? What do you think nothing feels like? Send us a message, let us know. So, the next question is from Kenya, Kenya, from Fanaka, another regular listener. Do you feel like reading this one out? <laughs> I, I misread the first bit, because the first, first few words, it says, as co-hosts. I, I caught that at the corner of my eye, and I thought it said, as, as assholes. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is, is, is that the epitome of a Freudian slip? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, as co-hosts, I had to really fight to say that. As co-hosts, you speak openly, but that opens you up to criticism in return. How do you deal with that? Well, I don't. we don't get a lot of criticism. We do get some mm. really... When we do get criticism... Mm. It's vitriolic. It, some... It's very, 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 very focused on mm. one point we've made. Mm. And we have actually explored, often when we get criticism, we actually then off, we explore it again in a future episode. We explore mm. it ourselves and revisit it and think that well, actually, did we, did we actually make, did we, could, could we, can we re, reassess what we said? And, yeah. uh, do we still stand stand by what we said and have our thoughts moved on from that point? And hopefully, listeners can learn from that process. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the, it's the whole idea of like you can't you you can feel right in the moment, but actually in the future be wrong. I'm, I'm very aware. I do come out with stuff that some people might find controversial, but my motivation is to say to talk about stuff that I'm frustrated that I'm not hearing perspective. Mm. Now, very often uh, we, we throw a perspective out there that we don't necessarily agree with ourselves. We're just playing devil's advocate. But sometimes mm. I get really frustrated with stuff I'm not hearing. So I, I put that out there because I mean, there must be other people who feel that. Yeah. And then you can explore it. And you can think, it, it, it is, you know, there, there's this perspective that I'm no longer frustrated about because I'm expressing it. And then you can actually examine it, saying, is this perspective on balance right or wrong? Or what can we learn from it? You know? Um, I I... I um I think there's a lot of value in putting out there stuff that isn't spoken about or maybe taboo. I I uh I welcome criticism because I can learn from it because I I can so and say it's like when I've run a businesses over the years and various staff have criticized and I I take it away, I throw it throw it about and I if it if it if it presents something that offers something better or what hasn't been considered before i might factor it in but if if the processes that i'm running stand up to that criticism then i, I just think it's a healthy challenge that's fine hmm. so i welcome that but i don't want to offend people but i don't really care if i have because very often offending is exposing somebody to something they don't want to hear maybe yeah i think i i I don't intentionally try to offend. I, if I offend, but we are offensive by by going into these dark realms. We we risk offending people, and sometimes it's not even dark realms. It, mm. it can be you just you just state a, an opinion, and it would offend somebody. And yeah. so, I, if I offend somebody, uh, you yeah, apologise, but I, you're not sorry about I it. I apologise. Yeah, absolutely. I think I would apologise if I if somebody pointed out to me and gave me a good sort of reason of oh, this really offended me or this mm. for this reason and I'm like oh yeah I will think about that in the future and how I speak mm. but if I offend somebody just because just because just they're offended that's a very mm. different thing entirely um, but you know this whole idea of criticism you know yeah you have to, you have to take it on as I take it on as feedback mm. I listen to it and then see what comes from that comes from it i uh, i try not to take it personally yeah when trolls get hold of something mm. you, you you can look at that see i i i have certain, i've not really been trolled really but if i was i i i think i what i would do i again i'd put aside the, the fact that they're trolling and listen to what they've said analyze it mm. probably more than the troll has and just see if there's anything i can learn from it yeah it was but then I just don't take it personally. I read recent. I've read been. I'm reading a book at the moment about social media in particular. But I read recently 
this is where it kind of goes off on a tangent, I suppose. But I read recently how it's, you know, there's a whole idea of all these, these, these online trolls that can be completely anonymous and be very particularly nasty to individuals. Mm. Uh, but whatever those individual, whoever whoever they are, and whatever they're doing, um, and you know the answer is a lot of that is often given in that situation is oh you know just don't be online, don't be on social mm. media, you don't need to be there. But actually, that's that's not the real way the way to look at it. And how it kind of analogized it to sort of like well if you if you get attacked near your home and people are standing outside of your home and having a go at you, it's kind of the same thing. You can't move, can you? Mm. Mm. So, and social media is part of that. Is 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 it almost identical? Yeah. You shouldn't have to face. You shouldn't. Should, you shouldn't have to face that sort of vitriol. No. And you should. And it's, the the answer is not. Oh, you don't have. To, you you don't have to be there. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, as co-hosts, we speak openly, uh, but that opens you up to criticism. How do you deal with that? Uh, I I I would like to see myself as somebody who is just putting out there a viewpoint that is maybe not heard enough and if i get criticized for that that's just a that's just a sacrifice i'm happy to make yeah, I, I would agree with that and but it's also opening up a conversation mm. you know we are or i can only say but speak for myself i i am somebody who will listen to somebody's point of view if it's put across in a way that's not that's not that's not um uh, vitriolic or mm. just Hidden motives. Yeah, exactly. Just just talk to me and say, right, I want to raise you on this point because mm. you made this point in this podcast. Talk to me mm. about it. And actually, we can even have podcast discussions around that, mm. you know, and make it into another conversation because it actually means that we we can actually explore what we actually, what we actually originally mm. spoke about from a yeah. different perspective. Yeah. We had Susie Darrington on talking about a particular episode that somebody had pulled up about. Pulled us up on, yeah. yeah and, about, uh, about a particular subject. We won't mention It gave us sub- material, you know. It's, yes. uh, we had some uh, feedback, criticism, whatever. It uh, doesn't matter what the subject was. And uh, so it gave us another opportunity mm. to explore with another person this subject and it, and Susie was not originally involved in that original episode, no. and it gave a little, it gave us, it gave us, I gave me pause for thought, and it gave me, and it gave us another conversation, mm. and hopefully, some, if you listen to that episode, you might, and then listen to the original episode, you might have seen two different sides or yeah. different, different, and that's aspects. all we're presenting is the different sides, yeah, and then you can make up your own opinion. Um, if we're criticised for exposing different opinions. And that needs looking at. That's a subject of another podcast. Yeah. Anyway, Paco Fanaka, uh, some nice, concise questions. Hopefully, we didn't waffle on too much. Um, the next episode is going to have. Uh, I don't recognise these listeners, so they must be sending in questions, new questions from new listeners. Wally in Manchester, England, and Jane in York, uh, England, both Northerners. Two sides of the Pennines. Uh, yeah, old, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, two, no, I haven't looked again, but two short questions again. So, if you like our short questions, join us next time. I've been Stuart the Wild Man Mabbot. He's been. I've been William Manklow, and thank you so much for being uh, being with us again for this podcast episode. And if there's something you'd like to criticise us about, send an email to the Countryside at gmail.com. <laughs>